Good morning and welcome to Tuesday, the 21st of February 2023, to join with me, Reverend Andrew, for this recorded service of morning prayer. Our readings this morning are part of Psalm 73 and part of St John's Gospel, Chapter 3. As usual, both readings will appear screen share through the course of this recording. So we turn to morning prayer. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Blessed are you, sovereign God, creator of all. To you be glory and praise forever. You founded the earth in the beginning, and the heavens are the work of your hands. In the fullness of time you made us in your image. And in these last days you have spoken to us in your Son, Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. As we rejoice in the gift of your presence among us, let the light of your love always shine in our hearts, your spirit ever renew our lives, and your praises ever be on our lips. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Psalm 73, verses 1 to 3 and 21 to the end. The response is, in the Lord God have I made my refuge. In the Lord God have I made my refuge. Truly God is loving to Israel, to those who are pure in heart. Nevertheless, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well nigh slipped. I was envious of the proud. I saw the wicked in such prosperity. When my heart became embittered, I, uh, and I was as pierced to the quick. I was but foolish and ignorant. I was like a brute beast in your presence. In the Lord God have I made my refuge. Yet I am always with you. You hold me by my right hand. You will guide me with your counsel. And art was receiving me with glory. Whom have I in heaven but you? And there is nothing upon earth that I desire in comparison with you. Though my flesh and my heart fail me, God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Truly, those who forsake you will perish. For you have put to silence the faithless who betray you. But, as, but it is good for me to draw near to God. In the Lord God have I made my refuge, that I may tell of all your works. In the Lord God have I made my refuge. A prayer. Holy God, may we find wisdom in your presence and set our hope not on uncertain riches, but on the love that holds us to the end. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. And glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning as now, and shall be forever. Amen. Reading from St. John's Gospel, chapter 3, and verses 22 through to the end. After this, Jesus and his disciples went into the Judean countryside, and he spent some time there with them and baptised. John also was baptising at Anion near Salim, because water was abundant there, and people kept coming and were being baptised. John, of course, had not yet been thrown into prison. Now a discussion about purification arose between John's disciples and a Jew. They came to John and said to him, Rabbi, the one who is with you across the Jordan, to whom you testified, he is baptizing and all are going to him. John answered, no one can receive anything except what has been given from heaven. You yourselves are my witnesses that I said, I am not the Messiah, but I have been sent ahead of him. He who has the bride is the bridegroom. The friend of the bridegroom, who stands near him, rejoices greatly at the bridegroom's voice. For this reason, my joy has been fulfilled. He must increase, but I must decrease. The one who comes from above is above all. The one who is of the earth belongs to the earth and speaks about earthly things. The one who comes from heaven is above all. He testifies to what he has seen and heard, yet no one accepts his testimony. Whoever has accepted his testimony has certified this, that God is true. He whom God has sent speaks the words of God, for he gives the Spirit without measure. The Father loves the Son, and he has placed all things in his hands. 
Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Whoever disobeys the Son will not see life, but must endure God's wrath. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, John's continuing the um, process of trying to uh, unpack uh, a, dis a meaning of who Jesus is. We know John's gospel, the very start of it, has this wonderful um, exposition of um, of God being uh, in, in Jesus being the light of the world, etc. And in these early chapters, as I say, we see John unpacking, unfolding uh, the nature of who Jesus Christ is, the Son of God, and what that really means. And in this last bit of this passage here, I just want to pick up a, a thought and reflection that comes out of that last uh, paragraph of that reading. We're talking about the earthly and the heavenly, what is low and what is high and above. And John was saying that, you know, the two really are quite separate, as, as they will be. They are quite separate. And when we think about it in our own lives, we deal with everyday ordinary things. And then another time we think of things beyond all that, the higher, more spiritual things, perhaps, about our lives, the, the, the values and, and all those sorts of things that, that sort of make our lives tick, as, we, as it were. And what John is saying here is that Jesus is the one who brings the two together. He brings the heavenly down to the earthly, or indeed raises the earthly to the heavenly. And that's the whole meaning, of course, of the incarnation, God coming to be amongst us, to dwell with us, to live with us. And of course, in Jesus, we see how God, yeah, in Jesus, God takes the um, things that are wrong on the earth, all that is uh, groveling, as it were, in the dirt and the dark, and puts, in other words, I'm talking about sin here, he puts that all to death once and for all by dying for, for all that on the cross. He takes that with him to die on the cross. And so therefore he brings the heavenly into the ordinary every day. And we who do our best to follow the way of Christ, of course, are doing exactly that, following Jesus, who brings the heavenly values into our ordinary everyday living and all that's going on in the ordinariness of our daily lives. Thanks be to God that we have Jesus who brings the heavenly into our earthly and raises our earthliness, as it were, into higher, better beings. Thanks be to God. Let's continue now with the words of the uh, Benedictus. I'll go back to screen share. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He's raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning as now, shall be for ever. Amen. So we come to our time of prayer. Let us pray. For Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise and blessing that you have brought her in yourself to bring the heavenly, your heavenly values, into our ordinary everyday lives through your Son, Jesus Christ. So, Father God, as we go on into this day, may we take courage, have confidence and assurance that your heavenly values are there with us in the ordinary everyday things that we will encounter today, that you will guide us through the day. And similarly, that through the ordinary everyday things of life today, we will encounter glimpses of your heavenly ways in them. So Lord, we pray that our minds, our hearts, our eyes, our thoughts, our brains will be open 
to perceive your presence amongst us. You're bringing the higher values into our ordinary everyday lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for those who find it difficult to grasp how um, God is at work in their lives. We remember before you, Lord, those who suffer in any way, in any situation or circumstance. Our thoughts and prayers, Lord, go to, to continue to go to the victims of the earthquake in Turkey and Syria uh, from the other week. Lord, be with those who have lost so much, have lost their livelihoods, have lost their homes, have lost loved ones, their significant other of their lives. Lord, be with them and be with those who have rescued them and continue to support them through this tragic, difficult time. May they know in the corner of their hearts that you are there with them in their suffering at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for those who have authority and responsibility over us. We pray your blessing, Lord, on all those who are in government, who hold position of any form of authority and responsibility over us in our lives. We pray particularly, Lord, at this time for an end to all the different disputes that are going on in the public sector and beyond. We pray, Father, for a peaceful resolution where there are strikes. We pray, Father, your blessing on the health service to restore confidence and uh, its readiness to respond to our needs swiftly and quickly. Bless, O oh Lord, all the doctors and nurses who have that authority over our lives, over our well-being and welfare. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We move into the colic for today. I invite you to share with me on screen share. We pray. Holy God, you know the disorder of our sinful lives. Set straight our crooked hearts and bend our wills to love your goodness and your glory. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Join with me in the Lord's Prayer as we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And so we come to the closing words. Go back to screen share. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil, and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you for joining with me. I pray your blessing on us this day and I look forward to being with you this time next week. Every blessing now. Goodbye.